Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. Going solo once again today. It's me, Chris Quinn, and I have a brewery spotlight for you guys today. I was recently in Indiana picking up some beer and came across some of uh, these brews by New Albanian, and I hadn't really had much uh, of their offerings before. I've had a couple, certainly none of these, so I figured it would be a good time to pick up a few of them and review them on the show. Taste them right here for the first time. New Albanian Brewery's been around for a little while, uh, I think since about the early 90s, don't quote me on that. They are from the very, very bottom of Indiana. Uh, in fact, I thought they were from Kentucky, until I went and actually looked it up on a map and realized that they're just over the river from Louisville, Kentucky in New Albany, Indiana. Um, pretty limited distribution. I think Kentucky and Indiana are the only places you can find them. But, you know, for you traders out there, I'm sure you can you can find them uh, if needed. And also if you're traveling through the great state of Indiana, um, which is well, I won't go there, but yeah, if you're traveling through or stopping or live there, you can certainly pick this up. So uh, without much further ado, I guess I'll get going with this first one. This is the Naughty Girl Blonde India Pale Ale. It's a Belgian Pale Ale or maybe a Belgian IPA. It's also a collaboration with a local Kentucky beer store, it sounds like, and Destroysa, who is... Um, uh, Belgian kind of um, like a new wave Belgian uh, craft brewer. I've had some of their beers on before on the uh, Imperial Stout episode. I had Black Albert, which was delicious. Really highly regarded brewery, and they were in the Midwest doing some collaborations uh, a little while back, and I'm guessing that's when uh, they collaborated with New Albanian. They also did some stuff with Three Floyds and, and some other people. And this is their, uh, this beer actually uses their house yeast. So that's kind of cool. One thing I really like about the New Albanian beers is they tell you a lot about the beer. They tell you what type of malts, what type of hops they're using, what type of dry hopping hops, what type of yeast they use, the IBUs, the gravity. One thing they don't do, which is really surprising considering how much information they give you, is no bottling info on any of their beers that I can tell, which really is a shame, and it's really something that me personally can potentially prevent me from buying a beer. So my hope here is that these beers are somewhat fresh. They seem to have been taken care of in the beer store, but you know, it was my first time in the store and I don't know. So let's take a look at this beer. Really nice orange, copper color, nice white head to it, pretty fluffy. It looks like there's a, a good amount of carbonation, which would make sense. That is typical of many Belgian styles is that very high carbonation level, very effervescent beer. Somewhat floral. Definitely getting a little bit of the yeast character as well. Some kind of peppery notes, but not overwhelming. Um, pretty, pretty mild. Uh, cascade for dry hopping, it looks like. Uh, they also hopped uh, in, the, in the kettle with Cascade as well. So I'm seeing if I can pick out some of these citrus characteristics, which are um, you know, pretty much made famous by C Cascade hops. Really getting more of the Belgian character. A little bit of banana, a little bit of spice, and like I said, some floral elements to it as well. Maybe a little orangey. Interesting beer. Pretty well put together. Um, uh, so the first thing you do when you're when, when you, I taste this beer is I get the Belgian character first. I'm getting a little bit of um, like a fruity banana, apricot, something like that in the front. Pretty soft mouth mouth feel as well. Um, let me see if they have no all malt, but almost like a like a weedy 
mouthfeel to it. Um, you know, wheat doesn't really attribute to the mouthfeel, but a lot of mouth, a lot of wheat beers have that kind of soft, round mouthfeel to it. Very much the same here. So anyway, you get that fruit up front, then you start getting some of those floral hops, and then finally, almost after or right as you're swallowing, you get a weird kind of ashy earthiness, which I don't mind. Uh, I took two sips because I wanted to see if I got it both times, and I did right at the end. And then very low bitterness at first, but now that I'm talking, it'll, it's starting to creep up very, very slowly. Um, IBU is 69, so 69. <laughs> it's that, That's pretty darn high. I'm surprised that I'm not tasting a lot more bitterness here than I am. I just think there's a lot of malt to balance it out. Solid beer. Uh, I think this is a, a, a really nice beer. I think it's pretty complex and no flaws. I think they're going for what what they're intending. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give this a 90. I think it's a nice solid beer. One inter interesting thing about New Albanian that I learned while just before the show kind of checking out their website, and something that I think is kind of cool, is they pretty much make it known that they're not going for metals. And what that means is Medals are awarded in beer competitions based on style, and there are style guidelines. So if you're trying to get a lot of medals, what you may do, you don't have to, but some people do, they look at the style guidelines and then they brew for the dead center of that target. So they want to be too style first and foremost so they can go and get medals. These guys, much more Belgian philosophy, they want to just brew beer that, that is cool for them. You know, winning a medal is not really an important thing to them. They want to brew really interesting beers that they find delicious and that hopefully other people will too. I think it's cool. I'm glad that both sides are out there. You know, if you want to get a good example of a brown ale, you know, that that's nice as well. But I think ultimately I, I tend to agree with the New Albanian philosophy, which is make good beer, you know. Uh, metals be damned. So, thought I'd throw that out there because I think that's I think that's cool, and I think with a lot of you know even Miller Lite now is is trumping up their World Beer Cup and Great American Beer Fest medals because they do have you know light macro lager more or less styles out there. I was at the World Beer Cup one time and Colt Forty Five won a gold medal. So just to put that out there. Um, so I think it's, it's cool that now that those are, that the medals are getting more kind of airtime, that these guys are saying, you know what, that's not the most important thing. Moving on. We have the Hoptimus. This is their Imperial IPA, double IPA, uh, about 9% alcohol, I believe, 100 IBU. And uh, again, Cascade hopped. It looks like it's the main flavor and dry hopping component. They must really like that hop, or that was one of the only ones they could get a hop contract for. Who knows? Uh, really cool label. I, I dig some of their label art in general. There's more than this. I was kind of at the store looking at it and thought it was pretty cool. Um, certainly not, again, the most important thing, but it's kind of fun. I mean, when you're at the beer store, one of the things you start to realize is how cool some of these beer labels are. I was talking to a guy that I just met at a beer store one time, older gentleman, who was saying, you know, back in the days of vinyl records, that was something that was really, really cool, the artistic expression of those album covers. And he sees a really interesting correlation between that and the beer labels of today, how you have artists even doing, uh, in the case of Flying, uh, uh, Flying Dog, and, and a lot of other students, you know, they're getting artists to do their work uh, for them and their, their label art. And I think it's really neat. Anyway, Hoptimus. Much, uh, well, not much, but more of a copper, amber color to it. Orange, um, not quite going into red, but, you know, nice burnt orange colors. All right, I'm not really getting a ton of hops on the nose. Maybe a little bit of like a marmalade, you know, like a bitter orange. Getting mainly a, a good malt backbone to it. And that's about it. Yeah, like a marmalade orange, some fresh orange. 
Yeah, so basically I'm getting like an orange marmalade character to it. Quite a bit of bitterness as well. And it's just growing and growing and growing. Even as I'm talking, it's getting more and more bitter on my tongue. Very bitter. This one, you know, at just under 70 IBU, I said I was surprised. This one, I'm feeling every bit of the 100 IBU. This is a pretty kind of tongue scrapingly bitter beer, but it's a double IPA. You know, that's kind of what you expect here. There is certainly a lot of malt to, to back it up, and I am getting those orangey flavors. Um, I'm, I'm curious how fresh this beer is. I don't know. I don't know what it's supposed to taste like fresh. Maybe it was brewed the day I picked it up. My guess is that it's not old, but not maybe brand spanking new either. As it is, I think it's fine. I'm going to go 87 with it. I think it's a good double IPA, but I just want a little bit more, especially when you're you're buying a bomber. These are, I think, seven or eight bucks, probably, I think, eight bucks a bomber. So they're not cheap beers. And guys, you know, come on, put your dates on there so I don't have to kind of second guess. Uh, so yeah, that's about it with that. You know, decent beer. Would I drink it in a bar on tap? Yes. Would I buy it in a bottle? Maybe if I knew it was fresh, but without that, you know, I need to have some sort of assurance that it's a fresh beer. All right, flying off. And last but not least is the Bonfire of the Valkyries. Uh, interesting, I don't even know what this is, some sort of uh, phoenix woman priestess dragging a dead corpse. Uh, it's a Rausch Schwartz beer. I don't think I've had either of those styles on before, so I'll, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I will just give you guys a brief understanding of what that is. Schwartz beer means black beer. It's a lager, so this is a lager, and it just means black lager. So it's typically a lighter lager, It's uh, for the, especially for the color, with a little bit of roast to it. And a Rausch beer is a smoked beer where they actually use smoked malts to impart a smoky flavor to it. And it can be kind of a nice subtle smoke, depending on how much they use, to if they use a lot of smoke, it can become like meaty, bacony, hammy in in flavor. And it's really kind of weird. I'll do a Rausch beer so a Roush beer show for sure at some point. But until then, if you see Roush beer or smoke beer, pick it up. It's not for everyone, but it is uh, kind of interesting. And some people love them. All right. So, really dark beer here. Not black, but very, very dark beer. I mean, in the glass, it appears to be black as I was pouring it, though I could see it's really more of a, um, like a reddish brown color to it. Uh, nice looking beer. A little bit of carbonation, kind of a, a, a light tan colored carbonation. And oh yeah, I mean, there's quite a bit of smoke here. No doubt about it. I mean, this is not one that would get by you. A lot of time, you know, if it's a smoke beer, you're going to be going to be able to tell. And it is, it's like a clean wood smoke here. It's not quite to the realm of meatiness. Uh, again, that's not bad, but I, I kind of like it here. It's not overly subtle, but it's, it's not kind of overpowering either. Nice beer. This is good. So this typically is not going to be high IBU. Yeah, 20. It's a lager beer, and it's really nice. The smoke goes very well with a, a, a nice, clean lager taste. There's not a lot of fruit here. It's all about the smoke, the malt, mal just the malty flavors, and also the roast as well. It is a Schwartz beer, so it is somewhat light in, in body, but you still have roast as well. and very drinkable. Got a little bit of a chocolate note on the end, which goes 
Uh, it just, I, I like how everything's harmonizing here. You got the smoke, the malt, and kind of the roasty edge to it, but also the chocolatey side of the roast as well. <clears throat> I like it. Uh, let me see if it says what the alcohol is here. It doesn't, but my guess is it's it's pretty low. This is a pretty sessionable beer. It certainly tastes like it. Uh, I would not have a problem, you know, finishing that bottle. And this would go great with food as well. Certainly, like some kind of smoky barbecue or chili or any sort of like kind of big meats like that. Any sort of game would go really well. And, uh, you know, maybe after dinner as well, or with a cigar or something like that. I don't smoke, but if I did, this might be what I would smoke it with. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I like it. This was my favorite of the three. I'm going to go 92 for the Bonfire of the Valkyries. So there you go. I mean, I think it's, I think in this order, what do I go, 92, 90, 87, something like that. Seems about right. So three solid beers from New Albanian. Uh, glad I picked them up and uh, got to give them a try. I, I know which one I'm going to. In fact, I'll pour it right now. There you go. So, there you have it. We'll be back in a couple days with another episode. Until then, you can keep uh, following us on Facebook or Twitter or on our site, craftyourtemple.com. Always appreciate the comments you guys have been leaving. Oh, and I forgot to do it this time, but... I'm going to start a new little segment on the show where I read you some of the spam comments that I get on online because they're just awesome. I think you guys are really going to like it. I just crack myself up sometimes reading them. But until then, I've got some delicious Schwartz Rauch beer to drink, and hopefully you do too, although probably not unless you're in Indiana.